This here is a breadfruit. Eight years ago, I made a video where I roasted a breadfruit on top of my stove, just like straight on the flame. And oddly enough, this video ended up being one of the most popular videos on my channel. And I think the reason for that is because of the thousand or so comments telling me that I am cooking it wrong. If you comment on a YouTube video, even if it's just to say, you should be doing this instead, that counts as interaction and it helps the video. So, thank you. I read a lot of suggestions on what I should have done with the breadfruit, and today I'm going to do some of those, because apparently cooking a breadfruit on the stove is a thing that nobody does. In the history of the universe, no one has ever roasted a breadfruit on the stove, so I shouldn't be talking about that. We're not going to do that today. You can watch the old video for that, though. So today I'm going to try several of the different suggestions on how to prepare a breadfruit properly. Before I do that, though, I'd like to give a shout out to MiamiFruit.org for sending me a nice box full of breadfruits. Finding breadfruit is kind of tricky. Every now and then you can find one at like a Latin grocery store or if you're lucky enough to have an African grocery store, uh, you could check there and they might have them available. If not, you can order them online over on MiamiFruit.org. So Miami Fruit, thank you. First, we will boil it, and boiling breadfruit is one of the easier ways of preparing it. You see, like, there's all this, like, white stuff on it. You might think, like, oh, Jared is eating mold again. Nope, nope, this is, uh, not mold. That is latex. There is a lot of latex inside breadfruit and other artocarpus fruits. So because of that, uh, using, like, a vegetable peeler on this thing not the best way of doing it. You actually want to cut off the skin rather than peel it with like a potato peeler. I will illustrate why this is a bad idea, okay? Look what happens. No, well, actually that's not a bad idea. <laughs> So, yeah, that uh, actually did work pretty well. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you can peel it with vegetable peeler, apparently. I think it would actually be faster to use a knife, though, because then you just, like, cut it off in slices. But, uh, yeah, so I think next time I actually would probably cut it, just to save on, on time. And uh, usually if you do it that way, you want to cut it into wedges first. Not after, like I'm doing now. Now that I have it in fourths, I want to get this core out of it. There's like a spongy inner part around this core too, and you don't want that. And I apologize to any uh, trypophobic viewers out there. The uh, holes inside this thing, and it's uh, not everybody's cup of tea. It's also quite soft in there. And that might be the ripeness. You see this there, it's uh, quite soft. So depending on how ripe your breadfruit is, it might be very hard, like a potato, or it might have a little bit of uh, goo to it. Okay, so cord, and I'm going to cut it into, yeah, I think that's probably good, um, into eighths like so. And I'm putting this in a bowl of water. That way it doesn't turn gray. Speaking of ripe breadfruit, when a breadfruit is entirely ripe, it gets soft and you can eat it raw like that. I did that once and it tasted a little bit like mashed potatoes. It was okay but the texture is not the best thing in the world. So I can definitely see why people always seem to cook breadfruit. This water has been salted. Hmm. I just moved to a new place and it has much better lighting, which means that now I can grow plants. I don't know what I'm doing. 
I've decided to take an online course about how to grow plants indoors, and I'm doing that on Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for anybody that loves learning. Whether you want to brush up on an old skill, learn a new one, or if you've been doing something completely wrong and you should probably fix it, then do it with Skillshare. Oh, oh, you're supposed to put water on them. <laughs> Duh. Please hurry. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description below will get a one-month free trial to Skillshare. That way you can start exploring your creativity today. And thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Somebody looks thirsty. Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. Keep it up. Okay, so it has been about uh, 25 minutes and the breadfruit is, is definitely softer. It's also changed color, it's a little bit more yellow now. So I'm going to take these out. <laughs> Very good. I mean, it's not really something just like eat hunks of it plain. It is a side. Breadfruit is a staple food. Okay, so it's used the way that rice is used or bread is used, uh, cassava is used. What is cool though is that it is a staple food that happens to be a fruit. It is full of starch, it is very nutritious, and the trees produce a huge amount of them. So when these are in season, trees will be popping out like hundreds of these. And they, I believe, actually produce fruit even in the off season. You'll still get some breadfruit. It's like very similar to potato, but it also has its own little thing going on to it. It's almost like how sometimes people will use cauliflower as a potato substitute, but this is more like a potato than cauliflower. So yeah, boiled breadfruit, very good. What's next? Probably the number one suggestion on how to use a breadfruit that I got was to make something that is popular in, in Indonesia and in Malaysia called sukun goreng, which means uh, fried breadfruit. And this, I'm saying that wrong, I'm no, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is something that uh, I've actually had quite a lot of because I used to work in Malaysia and when I was working in Malaysia this is something that I would have like every single day. It was like uh, like a tea snack sort of thing. So you'd get like a cup of tea and some fried um, snacks for like a dollar. And of those fried snacks they had sweet potato, plantain, uh, chempedak, durian, and breadfruit. And breadfruit was one of my favorite ones so I'd get this one all the time. A little well here. I'm going to put about a fourth cup of cold water in there. So this is the consistency that you want. A nice thin batter like this. And this needs to sit for about 15 minutes. So that's a great time to work on the breadfruit. But I've chosen this particular breadfruit because this one is actually a little bit soft. So that's going to make this one a little bit sweeter. And that is something that uh, would be good for this particular kind of application. And this time I'm going to peel it with the knife instead of a peeler. 
yeah, it's a lot faster that way. So while this is frying, I'm going to make a condiment for it. Now, typically people will dip this in palm sugar, or sometimes people do. I don't have any palm sugar. I do have some coconut sugar though, and I think this will be kind of like in the same sort of direction. We'll give it like a, a sweet taste, but also like a little something malty and extra to it. So to do that, you take one of these guys, you add a little bit of water, and you put it in the microwave. It's got the vibe of dunking a French toast stick inside some uh, maple syrup. It's kind of what that's like. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, it's a very mild taste. So when it's fried like this, you don't get like a strong flavor from it. It's like milder than a French fry. But the texture is good. It's not exactly like a French fry or a donut because this has kind of like a, a dense, chewy texture to it. This is really taking me back to when I was in Malaysia. All I need now is um, a cup of tetaric. It's not quite the same, but still pretty good. This though is excellent. All right, so what's next? It doesn't seem like a great idea, but um, there is a video of a guy doing this and it looked like it actually worked pretty well. And what you do is you microwave it. So you take a breadfruit, completely whole, nothing, don't even poke any holes in it, according to the video. You put that in a plastic bag, which seems like a really bad idea. And then you put that in a small bowl. Okay, it goes in, and I'm going to cook this for 20 minutes. We have a situation here. Um, <laughs> the steam is, uh, I, is causing this to blow up like a balloon. Well, that worked, and um, I wasn't expecting it to work this well. Tastes totally fine. It cooked all the way through. It, it tastes good. It's a little bit like if you were to make a potato in the microwave rather than in the oven. It's better to roast it, you get a little bit more flavor to it. But like this, surprisingly pretty good. But, won't lie, freaks me out. The idea of taking that thing, putting it in plastic, and putting it in the microwave, uh, that seems like a bad idea, because you don't know what's inside that plastic. It's not really meant to be cooked with. So I think uh, this is not a bad idea, but I would put this in like a microwavable Tupperware or something. That way you don't have to worry about like whatever it is inside that bag leaching into the food that you're eating. But yeah, it works. Next up, baking it in the oven. I'm 
bake this like a giant potato. Really good. It tastes very similar to how it was when it was boiled, maybe a little bit stronger. It doesn't really have like a huge roasty taste to it, maybe like a little bit more than boiled, but not that much. I think because it's wrapped in the tin foil, it's actually steaming from the inside out. So I, it tastes a little bit more like a steamed or boiled breadfruit rather than a roasted one. I think if you want it to have that kind of char taste, then you actually do need to pitch it into a fire or do it on a grill or do it on your stove top. And finally, one thing that a lot of people suggested to me was to try breadfruit cooked with coconut milk. What I'm going to do is make a recipe that I found from a blog, Healthier Steps, and it's a recipe for a Jamaican rundown using coconut milk, and breadfruit. That's really good. That, I think, is not something to just eat with a fork. You definitely want it um, as a side with some rice, some vegetables, stuff like that. But the uh, the flavor in there is quite good. It reminds me a little bit of like a Japanese potato kind of curry. You, that curry powder that's in there and the breadfruit gives that kind of vibe. And um, it's really spicy because of that habanero in there, but in a really nice way. So that's it for the breadfruit. Um, you know, long ago, <laughs> when I tried roasting that breadfruit on the stove, I was not super impressed, to be honest, because it was a lot of time, a lot of effort for something that was fairly mild in flavor. But you can prepare it so many different ways, and all the ways that I prepared had like their own benefit to it. Whether you're frying it because you're having a cup of tea, whether you're microwaving it because you don't have a lot of time, whether you're roasting it because you do have a lot of time. There's a, a preparation for a lot of different sorts of occasions and uh, all of them were surprisingly good. So I think this is a very versatile thing, something you can use for a lot of different sorts of dishes and definitely one to check out. So thank you once again to miamifruit.org for sending me a big box full of breadfruits and thank you all for watching. Bye-bye. Hey, before you click away, I'd like to give a big shout out to my mega patrons. That includes Smarter Every Day, Sean M. Glynn, and Lofty Rex. They are big supporters over on Patreon.com. Patreon is how I can continue to keep this series going. So if you'd like to help support the channel, uh, take a look at the link in the description below. If you don't want to go on Patreon, another way to support the channel is to buy a t-shirt. T-shirts are available also in the description below. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.